Hello, I'm Jack Putz. I'm a professor at the University of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia, and also at the University of Florida in the other Sunshine State. I joined forces with Tropical Forest Foundation back when it was getting started in the early 1990s as a member of the Permanent Review Committee, but only was a board member towards the end um, of its run in 1999 to 2002. Um, it was a mistake on my part to not be more directly involved from the beginning because TFF provided for a researcher like me an unprecedented and unparalleled opportunity to interact with like-minded people from industry, um, high-ranking officials from Caterpillar and still timber importers, as well as environmentalists and, and, and other researchers. Um, we need organizations like that, and I'm sad um, that TFF is not still running strong, but I think I'll show in this talk how it is still having um, great impact. So it's a legacy that continues. I share with TFF and have shared from the beginning a, a, a concern about the fates of tropical forests and particularly the impacts of logging. And we came up with this term reduced impact logging or real back in 1993. There was nothing particularly new um, about what we were advocating, the planning of logging operations, the training of workers and their supervision so as to reduce the deleterious impacts on the environment. What I lacked as someone trained in ecology and civiculture was the forest engineering um, capacity of people like Art Klassen and Johann Swede, of both late and lamented of the Tropical Forest Foundation and important mentors in my life. Together we were all, together we were attempting to convince forest industries that there were efficiencies um, to be gained from planning, operations, supervising workers, and professionalizing the workforce. And I constantly remind myself that logging is the most dangerous occupation, worse than mining and offshore fishing in terms of injuries and fatalities. Um, and it's also just sad that so much damage, unnecessary damage is done. And um, this has been the mission of Tropical Forest Foundation from the beginning, to, to avoid those deleterious impacts. Um, and what we've shown as researchers over and over again is that these, these impacts can be reduced by 50% through what TFF has um, operationalized in terms of operational manuals and training facilities so as to reduce the the amount of uh, soil damage, as you can see here in this slide, wet weather damaging, damage steep slopes, um, soil compaction, and, and these deleterious impacts on soils in particular last for decades, up to, up to half a century um, to recover soil from soil damage. Um, the, you know, the other sad factor in, in, in what we call conventional logging is that there's a lot of wood waste. And that wood could be converted into furniture or flooring, um, kept out of the atmosphere, and um, otherwise made use of rather than just left in the forest to decay. But for that, you need workers who are trained and, um, and supervised. And Art Klassen and, and Johann Swede brought, and others brought to TFF that, that expertise in forest engineering that, that many of us lacked. And I, other people knew them better than I did, but I consider them my major mentors in forestry. And, and they were very interesting men. Um, Art from British Columbia, a forester, worked all over the world and settled in Indonesia uh, eventually. And um, Johan started in Indonesia. Um, you know, spent a couple years of his childhood in a internment camp during the Second World War in Java, um, University of Syracuse in New York after that, then worked um, for Ludwig down in the Jari um, project in Brazil, finally to our um, everlasting benefit at Kawashi that he started the TFF training facility in Brazil. 
Um, both believed in team building and in training and extended training opportunities beyond just forest workers, the training of auditors um, for the sort of growing certification movement I think was really critical. Um, they also provided opportunities for decision makers, politicians, environmentalists, and so forth. Um, I accompanied a group of students, graduate students, from the University of Florida, mostly environmentalists and social scientists, to Kawashi um, back a couple decades ago. And, and I remember to this day, uh, one of the students, now a very prominent scientist at the Food and Agricultural Organization, um, I remember the gleam in her eye as she drove across a landing in a skitter um, and entered the forest. And, you know, Johan, in, in the training that he provided, in addition to being a very charming man, he knew that people learned from experience. And so he provided those experiences for everyone. And, and with respect, um, which really made those lessons um, stick. And Johan was also um, collaborating with scientists like me, um, but prominent scientists like um, his collaboration, I think, with Frank Wadsworth on liberation thinning was um, really important research. And the work of Tom Holmes, also of the US Forest Service on the economics of real still is unmatched in the quality of the research and, and the findings are, um, are, are astounding. It's really a model study that I'd like to see replicated. Um, and the focus on, on logging impacts was reasonable because in most tropical forests there is no, no other intervention other than and the harvest, the selective harvest of timber, and, and the damage done is astounding, you know, on due to poor road construction, often expensive to build, not maintained very well. There's a great deal of, of soil loss and erosion. And when the forest is relogged, as it usually is within 15, 20, 25 years, the road reuse of roads is restricted and very expensive to move soil to fix these problems. So it's a sh maybe increased short-term financial gains, but in the long term, it's a, it's a losing proposition. And this was a major lesson from, from TFF and the work of Tom Holmes and others. Um, and, and not only in, in, in Brazil and, and Indonesia, but also in Guyana and Gabon and, and elsewhere, the, the effects of TFF um, were very extensive. Um, I was, at the time, early 90s, started a reduced impact logging project in Sabo with a goal of, of um, increasing carbon retention in the forest, so reducing emissions from logging. And really benefited a great deal from, from Art and Johan both in, in terms of, of designing that project. So that um, for everything from the, the planning to road construction, um, skidding, and closure operations, because we're often disregarded so that after the harvest is finished, the, the roads, the bridges aren't removed, the abutments aren't dealt with, and, and, and the, the legacy of, the bad legacy of logging con continues. So we started this project, Reduce Impact Logging for Carbon in, um, in Sabah, in, in Malaysia. Other research like this underway all, all over the world, but ours was the first to have a carbon perspective. Um, and I, I have to admit that although it's been 30 years now, we still haven't sold a single carbon credit for reduced impact logging, but we're on the verge, or we're about to do it. And, and we did demonstrate, again, as was demonstrated by TFF at, at Kawashi, that um, the amount of, of soil damage and stand damage was reduced by by 50%, and we translated that into, into carbon. And TFF's work on, on reduced impact logging continues, um, and, and we, together with TFF and the Nature Conservancy, conducted a study recently, still not published, in, in Indonesia in 25 logging concessions from Sumatra down to the Papuan provinces. And, and I just want to highlight the result of this because um, the results are complicated because it depends on how you present the results. 
here, um, we're looking at emissions from logging, which sound fairly simple. The real C protocol developed with TFF and TNC is a very efficient way of sampling forests that are selectively logged, not wasting a lot of time on the 60% of the forest area that's untouched by loggers on average, um, but really getting reliable data on the emissions. And um, here are, are some of those data presented from left to right from central Kalimantan to the Papuan provinces on the right. And each column represents the committed emissions. So this is the uh, um, amount of carbon that's going back to the atmosphere. And you'll notice here that the data are presented in, in megagrams of carbon per megagram of carbon harvested in the, in the timber that goes out of the forest. And that's one of three measures that we have. We also present data in terms of um, megagrams of carbon per hectare harvested, which makes sense that as you increase the intensity, the amount of, of harvest, uh, the amount of emissions goes up. So that's not, it's interesting in its own right, but it's not, doesn't get at the picture. And we also do it in the more traditional way of megagrams of carbon emitted per cubic meter of wood harvested, which is interesting. But when you're working across a landscape as broad as the Indonesian archipelago, uh, where you have at one end the, the Papuan provinces where I call it the Merbau effect, high density wood, a cubic meter of, of Merbau is very different in terms of carbon than a cubic meter, meter of a light red Maranti in, in Sumatra or, or Kalimantan. So that's why we present it as megagrams per megagram. And, and what you see here, each color represents um, a, a different um, source of, of emissions. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because it's um, complicated. It, the top is the felled tree remainder. So it's what the blue is what, what the feller bucks off in the forest, the stump and the top. Some of it is usable wood um, if the workers are untrained and un supervised and unrewarded for, for doing it well. Um, the, the next is the collateral damage from felling. Then under that is the skidding damage. Below that is the road damage. <coughs> and the bottom, which is a very small component, is the log yards. And, and what you can see from this slide is that there's a great deal of variation in, in the emissions per, per ton of carbon that's removed from the forest as logs. And maybe it's easier to see it <coughs> in this slide, which shows that um, the existing practices paired with the, the reduced impact logging practices based on the best practices that we observed in each region. And, and you can see that the difference between existing and reduced impact logging practice is very large, particularly in the Papuan provinces, and that overall in these 25 logging concessions, there's a 60% benefit from reduced impact logging that's not being realized. And, and this is a little frustrating, I mean, but you can think about it as the cup is 60% empty or 40% full but it, for me, it means that there's a long way to go to capture all the benefits of reduced impact logging. So the work of TFF is ongoing. TFF Indonesia is a vibrant organization, and as Bila is going to talk about it, it's great to have him um, running the show now. They're very involved in certification and carbon and, and all, but there's, we have a lot to do to convince industries to, um, to do it right. And But I have to say that Disappointed as I was in this finding, we started working recently in Gabon, where three logging concessions, um, all FSC certified, are logging right, logging correctly, using reduced impact logging practices. So, you know, this is a, a main skid trail. You can see how narrow it is. The roads are also narrow. Um, this is a main road, so it will be used multiple times. But what most impressed me was the, the fellers who are professionalized in these, just as we've been talking about and TFF has been promoting right off, the fellers are well-trained and rewarded for felling properly and bucking properly. Um, and, you know, so they have personal protective gear, training, and a reward system based on wood that they didn't waste. Um, so 
the recovery is much higher. And I've asked in all three concessions how they could afford that to pay premiums, you know, incentives to workers and, and all this training and retraining every year. And they said, well, we get it back in a couple weeks of, of increased volume. So, you know, this is possible. And here's a, a felling gap created, small felling gap, pre-felling liana cutting. And here's a tree growing up eight years later into a felling gap, a future crop tree that's going to be harvestable. So the work of, of TFF continues. Um, I think the benefits are, are substantial. Unfortunately, tropical forestry um, is not faring very well globally. And I'm living in Australia now where many people say that forestry is the new F word and logging is being shut down in one state after another. Victoria just closed it and New South Wales is closed in Western Australia. New Zealand closed down logging of native forest um, decades ago. And you know, so there's a lot of work to be done for a TFF like organization, perhaps we need a Tom Lovejoy or somebody like it, charismatic leader to bring people together to, to have a forum that allows us to consider the benefits of well-managed forests. Thank you.